My guest had a one-hour visitation with Jesus, where he was given a roadmap on how every believer, that's every one of us, can have deep intimacy with the Messiah, uh, like those we read about in the Bible. You know, become normal. Next. Welcome, Rocha Kodesh. Welcome, Spirit of the Living God. I'm reminded of my friend Catherine Coleman. She would say, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He's all that I have. And I tell you, he is all that I have. And he's more than enough. My guest, Freddie Ramirez, encountered supernatural evil as a young child. Tell me about it. Sid, I wish I could tell you that the first experience I had was with heaven, but unfortunately it wasn't. But there's something I want to say. Um, I had a supernatural encounter with the darkness at a young age at five years old. But even as preparation, and even now, I'm just hearing the Holy Spirit tell me that there are people that are watching, that are being tormented by demonic spirits, even as I was from the ages of five years old all the way to 18, 19 years old. You know, I was born in the Dominican Republic and I was living there. And my parents left me off at my grandmother's house. And one day there was a heavy thunderstorm. And I remember that I go out to the backyard to go pick up my dog to bring her back inside. And as I do that, there's this strong lightning that strikes almost right in front of me. And the best way that I can describe how this happened is it, it felt like I was absorbed into the lightning. And as a five-year-old kid said, I saw 12 shadows. I couldn't see their faces. And they just stood there and just looked at me. Now I'm spooked out as a five-year-old and I go inside, my aunt, I tell my aunt what's happening. She tries to close all of the windows and the doors, but the winds are blowing so strongly in the house that she's struggling. So I'm scared even more, so I go to my safe space, which was my grandmother. I saw something that I, I, it took me a while to really get over. My grandmother's eyes started rolling back to, it was just pure white and she started saying this name out loud. And I remembered it because it traumatized me so much. She started saying Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara, which later I found out that is, is associated with Santeria or, or voodoo as well. She grabs me by the hand and she takes me to the front door. And the moment that the door opens, another lightning strikes right in front of me. But this time there's a shadow of a woman that comes in. I let go of my grandmother's hand and I run to her room and I hide under her bed. Um, and for years, I kept this completely secret. I remember it was until the age of 13 that I told my father, which is his mother, but my dad was just like, well, come on, Freddie. I mean, no, your mom, my mom was a Christian. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna bring it up again. And when I tell my mother, she tells me, that makes sense. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what do you mean that makes sense? And she begins to explain to me, Freddie, what you don't know is that your grandmother was associated with a family friend that was, that was practicing voodoo. And she hated my mother. And so much so that she told my mother, I went to Haiti and I spent a whole weekend there doing a voodoo ritual to curse your son and to give him over to Satan. I asked her, well, where is she now? Because in my heart, I wanted to, as weird as this may sound, I wanted to bless her, I wanted to preach to her, but I also wanted to thank her as well. Because what the enemy meant for evil God had turned it around for his good. She, she had a mysterious brain tumor uh, that doctors could not explain, and she tragically passed away a couple years after that. See, one of the things that we need to understand is that when you mess with a demonic, the demonic will start to mess back with you. When you moved to the U.S., it even got worse. 
you, you were, some of the things you were involved in, I'm called sleep paralysis. How did you get out of that? It was very difficult, Sid. For many years, even after five years old, when I came to this country, there were moments where I was suffering from sleep paralysis every single night. What is sleep paralysis? Sleep paralysis is the technical term that they give it, but it's, it's totally a demonic spirit. It's when you're sleeping and you're awake, your mind is awake, your eyes are open, but your body is completely asleep, you're frozen. Hmm. And so you, you are literally paralyzed. That's why they call it sleep paralysis. Man, there's, there's one moment where I remember that I was just praying and just hoping that God would come and rescue me. And I was just scared. And so I remember one day that I whispered the name Jesus and every demon just completely left. But the victory truly happened when I gave my life to the Lord. That's really when it began to happen because when I started to build a relationship with God, and, I, and, and I'll tell you this, even when I started coming to the Lord, I still suffered from these demonic visitations. But one day in prayer, the Lord told me, Freddie, I want you to take authority over what's happening to you. I want you to command my angels to stand watch over you. And so, I did exactly what the Holy Spirit told me to do. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command angels to stand guard in my room, and I command all demonic spirits to never visit me ever again. So what happened? And in that moment, Sid, I'll tell you, I was so excited. At that time, I was scared of going to sleep, but now I was excited to go to sleep because I would literally see angels <laughs> standing in my room. And I've never suffered a sleep paralysis ever since that one time. Pray, pray, pray for people, not just sleep paralysis, but sleep problems right now. Yes, I want to pray for everyone that is watching at home. You're having problems having to sleep. Even, you may not be even seeing uh, demons, but I'm just even hearing uh, that there's people that you, you suffer from migraines. Even when you're trying to sleep, your mind is just running wild and you have no peace. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the same way that you spoke to me and told me, take authority over the demonic spirits that are coming after you. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, in the authority that you have given to us because of what you did on the cross, we command every spirit to leave your people alone, and we speak your peace into the minds of your sons and your daughters. Pa Father, we declare every single person that is being robbed of their rest. I declare, God, you give them supernatural rest. In Jesus' mighty name. You, you walked into a church, a real church. What happened? This was such an amazing time in my life because I was new in the Lord, and I was so hungry. I was having so many experiences growing up, seeing angels and demons, but I felt the Lord beginning to call me. I did it really know who God was. I grew up Catholic. I've heard about God. I've heard about the Pope. I've heard about the saints. But I didn't really know who Jesus was. But I was hungry. And so I remember one day, I got up early in the morning to pray, and I go to this church building, and I start walking towards the front. And all of a sudden, I see this tall man in a white robe. I couldn't see his face. He walked but he walked in a speed that just did not make sense. It was like he was walking, but he was running at the same time. He walks right through me. Through you? Literally right through me. Hmm. I was completely amazed. So I remember I turn around, and when I turn around, I just see like a sizzling smoke just appear. And I see him walk into the back and just disappear. But the beautiful thing, Sid, is that when I see him walk away and disappear, I could see countless of angels in the back room. So intercessors are praying in the front, but I see angels <laughs> praising God and dancing in the back. And after the prayer is over, I see this uh, a friend of mine that I recognize, and I explain to him exactly what just happened to me. And he began to tell me, just like, oh my God, you saw Jesus. <laughs> That was Jesus. He was coming after you. And I'm like, Jesus? 
<laughs> and I can tell you, Sid, I didn't understand what happened to me in, that, in my life in that moment, but something changed. Something really changed inside of me. It's, it's almost the best way that I can describe it um, is I felt like God took me. God took my heart and he's kept it really ever since. Now comes the most amazing one hour visitation with this same Jesus that gifted Freddie with the supernatural gift of prophecy, healing and deliverance and commissioned him to teach God's priority. You'll be surprised. It's not souls. <laughs> be right back. Hey, this is Freddie Ramirez, and I am so excited to offer you this CD audio teaching called Knowing His Spirit. One of the questions that I get asked the most is, how do I encounter Jesus? How do I develop a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit to experience the heavenly realm? God wanted to teach me how to encounter Him. We have more than 50 recorded known testimonies of people who've had encounters with the heavenly realm. And many of them are corporate encounters. Groups of people saw the same exact thing. They've all experienced that heavenly realm together. I wanna let you know that this is possible. And in this audio teaching, I'm gonna give you the keys on how you can begin to walk that life into the encounter realm of heaven. One of the biggest challenges that we see in the body of Christ is that we don't walk in the spiritual and the spirituality that has been given to us through relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know, many people believe that encounters is just a luxurious like, thing. It's only for big apostles and prophets. But as we read throughout the Bible, encounters was for every single believer. And the way that we begin to see this and we begin to operate in this is through friendship with the Holy Spirit. When you begin to operate out of a friendship with the Holy Spirit, then by nature, you become spiritual. I'm so excited to be able to share with you personal stories and visitations that God has given me that will allow you to grow in your relationship with God and take it to a complete new level. And so I want to teach you how you can be spiritual and how you can commune with God. Learn how to encounter the realm of heaven. It's easier than you may think. Just call or go online at sidroth.org 9964 and make your donation of $15 to get Freddie's brand new exclusive audio CD, Knowing His Spirit. Then choose to receive your CD by mail with shipping and handling included or choose the digital download option. We now return to It's Supernatural. Freddie, tell me about that one hour visitation with Jesus. So at this point in my life, I'm walking with the Lord, but I'm still trying to understand Him. And so I remember one morning, I wake up to pray at 5 a.m. and I get out from my room and I go to my living room and I sit down in a chair to pray. And as I'm praying, now, this is going to sound crazy, but I guess it's the right show to talk about. <laughs> uh, it's going to sound normal to me. <laughs> normal is defined by the Bible, that is. Absolutely. So as I'm, as I'm praying, I see a light from across me. And when I look towards the light, I see this sizzling light, kind of similar to the same one I saw in the church building. But now it began to open up and it began to consume the entire room, my entire living room. And so everything began to change. Now, understand, it's 5 a.m., it's dark, I'm in my living room, and now everything's changing to this beautiful forest with this light and all of these beautiful trees and grass and flowers. And the only thing that remains the same is the chair that I'm sitting on and the chair right next to me. And I'm wondering, Am I hallucinating? What's really going on here? 
And then from that same sizzling, fiery light comes out a man. And immediately I knew that it was Jesus. And Jesus comes out and he sits on the chair right next to me. And I remember so clearly that I thought in my mind, oh my God. <laughs> I have had so many questions that I wanted to ask you, but I've completely forgotten them all <laughs> because I'm just amazed that Jesus is sitting right next to me. And as he looked at me, he understood everything that I thought. I was surprised. It was like he responded in thoughts. In thoughts. And you heard what he, his response. And, and he just put me at ease. And the best way that I can describe what I felt when I was sitting next to Jesus is I felt that majesty. Listen, when Jesus appears, it's not, am I going to worship? No, your body just knows to worship the creator that made it. And so I remember I was just in full worship. But what put me at ease is that I felt like I was sitting next to a friend. And I remember that this is probably the most memorable thing of seeing Jesus. I looked into his eyes. And the Bible talks in the book of Revelations of how Jesus has an eyes of fire. But the truth that I've learned about Jesus is that Jesus can do whatever he wants. I looked into his eyes and it just, it's not just that they were blue, but I could see the ocean in his eyes. They were alive, Sid. It, was, it wasn't just a picture. As I looked into his eyes, it's almost like I was getting absorbed by oceans of love. Hmm. And I just completely just felt the presence and the love of God that he had for me. But even before I asked him, he told me, you have questions for me. <laughs> Ask me. I was just like, okay. <laughs> so I asked him, why did you allow all of those things to happen to me when I was five years old? I was just like, I, I went through so much suffering, Lord. Why, where were you? And I'll never forget, Jesus looked at me with, with sadness in his eyes. And it was in that moment that I understood that he felt the pain more than I did. Hmm. He felt much more compassion and much more sorrow than what I did. But Jesus looked at me, he told me, Freddie, even though you didn't see me, and even though you didn't feel me, I was there. I protected you. And I brought you out of this darkness so that I can meet with you. And because I have a purpose and a call for your life. And, in the, and so we began to have conversations uh, for about an hour, and it was amazing. And then it came a point where Jesus got up and he said, I gotta go, and I'm like, will, will we do this again? And he told me, I'm gonna teach you how to encounter me. And he said, Freddie, you need to understand, it's not about you. I want to train you to encounter me so that you can teach my people how to encounter me, because I want to have an intimate relationship with my people. Well, that actually leads you to this question. When Freddie said, our major priority is not souls, yes. I, I live for people to come to know the Messiah. What did, what did Jesus mean? Yes, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering the same thing. If it's not souls, what is it about? And listen, souls is the top priority for, for God. And it is a top priority for us. But the Holy Spirit one day told me this. He told me, Freddie, I don't need you to advance my kingdom. I can advance the kingdom on my own. I choose to use you. But my priority, our priority, is to have relationship with our Father. Everything flows from that place in. If we don't have relationship with God, what power do we have to save? We don't even have the power to bring anyone to Christ if it's not through the Holy Spirit. See, sometimes we think that 
if we want them to be convicted, we have to see it. But the truth of the, that Jesus really began to teach me is if we just learn to plant the seed, if we just learn to preach the gospel, if we just learn to bring the good news of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will do His job of convicting them of their sin. And all we have to do is collect the harvest that is coming for us. Some people think that their ministry is their purpose, but you say there's a higher purpose. Absolutely. It's not a pastor, it's not a prophet, it's not an evangelist, but it's a son, it's a daughter. It's higher than being an apostle or a prophet. Because a son and a daughter, it means that you have a close, intimate relationship with the Spirit of God. And when you begin to flow out of that place of sonship, when you just learn to be a son and a daughter first, then everything just begins to flow. Ministry flows out of the place of, of sonship. Ministry flows out of the place of intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. I love what you said earlier when you, when, when you were quoting Catherine Kuhlman, which is don't grieve the Holy Spirit because He is all that I have. And I've learned that that's what Jesus wants to lead us all to. When we come to the point, point and we can say, you know what, I may have a ministry, I may have all of these wonderful things that's happening in my life, but nothing means more than my relationship with the Holy Spirit. He is everything to me. How about you? Do you have a relationship with God? Is that your highest purpose? Do you even know for sure your sins are forgiven? Repeat this prayer out loud with me. Mean it to the best of your ability. Dear God, Dear God I've made so many mistakes. I've made so many mistakes. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I believe your blood. I believe your blood. Washes me clean. Washes me clean. And now that I'm clean. And now that I'm clean. I ask Jesus to live inside of me. I ask Jesus to live inside of me. And be my Lord and Savior. Be my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Freddie, what, what is God about ready to do in America? I had a vision where um, I was standing in front of this like traditional Southern church building. And I see the devil and an army of demons. And they came armed with, with, uh, with bows and arrows filled with fire. And the devil gave his orders and they all just began to shoot at the, at the, at the church building. And eventually the church building just collapsed. It was, there was so much smoke, it was just completely ob obliterated to the point of ashes saw the devil see the church destroyed and he began to rejoice all the demons began to just shout and just get happy because they really thought they destroyed the church and then all of a sudden the devil stopped they says wait a minute there's something's wrong and he looks towards his side and Jesus is there and he whispers to the devil thank you <laughs> thank you he, <laughs> Jesus said thank you you see because the Lord told me this that many people are going to think that because of the dark times that we're living in, the church is being destroyed. Churches are, are closing down, and we see this happening after COVID. Churches are closing down in a rapid, uh, rapid rate. People are leaving the church. It looks like right now, like the church is losing. But what God is actually doing, He's using the devil to destroy the systems of the church because He's about to bring in a new move of the Spirit that's going to bring us back to the glory days, the same days that we experienced back in the Old Testament and, the, and in the book of Acts, where we just saw the move of God with Elijah, with Paul, with Peter. Those are the days that we are coming into now that God wants to bring us back into. Freddie, pray for the people. I want to pray that in the same way 
that the Holy Spirit came and visited me and brought me into encounters, that it will happen to you as well. Just lift up your hands right now. Even in this audience, just begin to lift up your hands. Father, right now in Jesus' name, we say we are hungry. Come on, can we just say that right now? We are hungry. We are hungry. We are hungry for more of you. Spirit of God, come and release your fire. Come and release your anointing. Let us know you in a deeper way. Let us hunger you. Let us hunger for more of you. Now we receive the Holy Spirit in a fresh way. Baptize us now, Lord, in a new wave of the Spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen.